Going to class should feel like watching a movie. The characters, the music, the directors put all this stuff in here so that it makes sense. When you walk out of the theater, it all feels like one complete whole. But class doesn't feel like that. And to show you why, I'll walk you through an example. So here we have a simple limit problem. What is going on with this equation as x approaches infinity? So we have x squared approaching infinity, we have x increasing to infinity, and we have infinity minus infinity. To which the book says, oh, you can't do that because infinity minus infinity cannot be defined. Now, why is that? What do they mean by that exactly? And this is the fundamental problem as to why you're not enjoying class. Because a lot of teachers are not breaking things down properly and explaining why things are the way they are. Because I can do 5 minus 5, I can do a million minus a million, anything else it would have been zero. What's different about this? So the book should have said, all right, x squared and x are increasing forever, that's what infinity is, but at different rates, at different speeds. With every increase in x, x squared is going to get bigger than the x is. But just by looking at these two symbols here, infinity, you can't extract the meaning. You can't extract which one is growing faster. And as a result of that, we cannot define who is winning. If the x squared is getting bigger faster, it's going to win in this subtraction, and the answer will be infinity. And vice versa, if the x is somehow winning, it's going to win in this subtraction, and the answer will be negative infinity. So when you don't break things down and explain why, you force students to memorize, and that's going to deny them any chance of actually enjoying the process of learning. A lot of students feel like they're the problem, like they're not meant for engineering, like they're stupid. When it's really, funny enough, their teacher, the one they're paying, who's not doing their job of breaking things down and explaining things in simple English. Other students will externalize it. They'll think, you know, yeah, math is just one of those stupid things. It's never made much sense. It's, it's not supposed to make sense. It's for those other guys, professors, scientists. Let those nerds do it. I'm just write this down so I can pass the class and, and get a good job. And that makes me sad. Because when I do math, I know the meaning and purpose behind every symbol that I write down. Even if you're not super enthusiastic yet about engineering, it feels good to be competent at something, good at something. And if you understand the stuff the right way, getting A's, it's going to feel like a side effect. Here's another example of how not to teach. And this one's from my circuits book. Although positively charged particles called holes are a helpful concept for understanding conduction in semiconductors, they are not fundamental subatomic particles, as electrons are. So I want you to focus in on this. Apparently, holes are not fundamental subatomic particles. So what are they then? Are they subatomic particles, but just not super important fundamental ones? Or are they fundamental particles, but just not subatomic ones? Maybe they're just, just atomic, or maybe they're above the atomic level. Because I've heard of positrons and muons and quarks and stuff. I know there's some different levels going on there. But the statement is just super ambiguous. Like, what is this guy trying to say? So I feel like some of these professors feel like it should be obvious to us, because it's obvious to them. And they've totally forgotten to empathize with us. We are, we're like stepping onto a new planet here. Statements like this will have me going the wrong way in a class, and I'll have to come back, I'll have to find out where I went wrong, and then play catch up. Turns out a hole is not even a particle. It is an empty space where an electron should be. So statements like this are coming at students in emails, and office hours, and PowerPoint slides, and project instructions. Can't tell you how many times I've seen that and how frustrating that is, trying to figure out what you're supposed to do, and you can't even figure out what the professor wants you to do. And during class, students have to listen and write stuff down and somehow process these complicated ideas all at the same time. It's just not a good formula. So unfortunately, a lot of professors are just not good at teaching, at breaking things down. And I hate to rag on anyone. Most professors are good, hardworking people. But that does not mean that you're good at teaching. And with some of the professors that I've experienced, if engineering education was like any other product you would purchase, you would return it the next day. That is honestly how bad it is with some of these teachers. Not all of them, but a lot. Too many in a field like engineering where you have these different concepts and these different equations building off each other, going between the classes. It doesn't take much to throw that out of whack for one professor to really not give you a good 
foundation in this area and then when you get to the next class you don't know what's going on and in part I blame it on these big research universities they're hiring researchers not teachers and then they're expecting these researchers to in addition to teaching to publish in this many journals a year rake in X amount of money in grants per year of course it's not going to go well so instead of a four-year degree feeling enlightening and eye-opening it feels exhausting and school should be challenging yes but for the right reasons. One of my former engineering students made a post that completely captures what a lot of students are feeling. After today's gauntlet, I feel like I just need to pack it up and come home. It's not fun anymore. It's not enjoyable. I'm tired of killing myself and messing up when it matters. I'm tired of being poor. I'm tired of eating junk. I'm tired of being stressed. I'm tired of long nights of homework and study that I put in just to fail tests. I'm tired of being a burden on my family financially. I'm tired of living in my van. I'm just tired of trying to pretend like I'm something I'm not. After 14 years at this, I'm just tired and I don't think I want to do it anymore. What's the point? Time to just embrace reality and get on with my life. When smart, hardworking students, who are obviously meant for engineering, feel like they can't, there's a serious problem. So hopefully you know what to look for and putting some things on your radar. Your professors should be breaking things down for you in simple English. And what they say should actually make sense to you. And if they're doing their jobs right, they should, be, should feel like a story. A whole bunch of ideas building up on each other, and they should be pointing out to you, all right, this one's kind of used in this application in the real world. Here's something else you should have learned in this class. Here's how it comes into play here. And if they're doing that right, dare I say it, it should feel enjoyable. But if that's not the feeling that you're getting from your classes, I just want you to know that it is probably not your fault. Because humans are the best in the universe at understanding and processing complicated, interrelated, multi-leveled ideas. Each of us has this. Hundreds of humans, going back hundreds of years, have understood engineering just fine. Why can't you? The answer is, you can. It's not even debatable. You are not even a factor in that equation. Engineering can make complete, undeniable sense to you. So much sense that you could even teach it. The only variable, the only undecided factor across all those people who have learned engineering over the years is the teacher, the one leading you on the journey. And I just hope that you have a good one.